Well, hi there, mathletes. Thanks so much for showing up for your learning and continuing to be awesome. Yes, you're becoming awesome at math, and that's a totally valid way to be awesome as a human being. So when you keep on showing up for your learning like this and, uh, and working on your math every week, maybe every few days, maybe every day, uh, you're becoming awesomer and awesomer. So I appreciate that about all of you. All right, let's take a look at the uh, problems that we looked at in the Maths League this past week. So here we go. We want to solve for A, B, C, D, etc. Uh, if I want to solve for A, I'm going to isolate it first by moving that 5. I could divide by 13 if I'm a maniac, but I don't want to do that. 13A is equal to 3. And then the next step is to divide by 13, both sides. Cancels, cancels. We get A is equal to 3 on 13. You want to be able to get that pretty quick. And give that as your answer. Do the steps. Make sure that 13 ends up downstairs and not upstairs. All right, cool. So A is 13, sorry, 3 thirteenths. All right, here if we want to solve for B, B happens to be on both sides of the equation, so move it. Subtract 3B from both sides, and then we get 8B, okay? But then at the, at the same time, let's move this 19 over to the other side, add 19 to both sides, plus 19. And then we get 8B is equal to 24, because this is 24, this is gone, and that's gone. So everything else is gone in the equation, and then we divide by 8. That's actually very similar to how I do these in my head, where I first get my coefficient of b by moving this over, and then I move this, and then once I have the coefficient of b, I forget about it for a second, find my constants, and then divide. Okay, maybe you find a better way to do it in your head. Tell me about it. I want to know different ways to do these in my head. I love these as mental math puzzles. With this one, we have to do the division of the brackets. There's no real, like, sneaky way that we can eliminate this 9 and this 8. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply this in. That's 45C, and then multiply that in. That's negative 32C. So I'm going to add 32C to both sides to get 77C. That's what those all add up to. Okay. As again, I get my coefficient of C first, and then I flick my constants over to the other side. So here I see I have 9 times 14, and I want to move that away. So I'm going to subtract 9 times 2 times 7. Okay, I'm going to subtract 9 times 2 times 7, which is 9 times 14, from both sides. This is 8 times 14. So I have 8, time, 8 groups of 7 minus 18 groups of 7. Okay, see what I do there? That's 18 groups of 7, so I take that away from both sides. So I end up with negative 70 over here because I end up with negative 10 groups of 7. It's easier than doing all the multiplications. Sometimes just keep them unmultiplied and you can cancel nicely. And so then we divide both sides by 77. And that lovely factor 7 will cancel out so that c is equal to negative 10 on 11. You see here we have a redundant factor 7 upstairs and downstairs. So when we move that, we get 10 on 11 there. Cool. All right, D. Let's do D. Here we just have to add, and fractions make their appearance, so the difficulty level goes up. We just add 9 to both sides. But I'm going to add 9 in a fancy way because I prefer to work with uh, improper fractions rather than mixed numbers. So I have 3 fifths D is equal to 39 on 4. All right, and now I go ahead and finally I get my inverse operations pen out. It's worth it for this one. I multiply both sides by the reciprocal, 5 on 3, and then I find this cancellation here. Okay, 39 and 3 both share a factor 3. 39 is 13 times 3. 3 is 3 times 1, so it just disappears. All right, and that gives me the final answer, D equals, because this cancels, right? So we just got D, is equal to 65, which happens to be these multiplying, over 4. 65 on 4. And if you gave this answer as 64 on 4 plus 1 on 4, which in other words is 16 and 1 quarter, which in other words is 16.25, then all of those, maybe I don't take that one, but... All of these I'd take as a good final answer. F, I love this one. It's torturing my colleagues with this one. I like this one. Okay, so I add three to both sides. Get that out of the way. 
So I got two ten. All right. But I also want to get these F's to the other side. So that our next line is going to be 11 on 5 minus 1 on 3 multiplied by f. That's the, co that's the coefficient of f. All right. And so to do that, uh, I kind of drew my brackets a little tight. Let me have a little more space here. I'm going to multiply those fractions top and bottom. This one 3 on 3 and that one 5 on 5. All right. So that's still the coefficient of f. I'm just scaling up my fractions. So that I end up with 33, that's 3 times 11, minus 5 on 15. F is equal to 210. Okay, and now 33 minus 5, you all know that's 28. On 15, F is equal to, we better factor tree that 210. I'm just saying, like, that's the same thing as 21 times 10, which gives me a 2 which gives me a three and a seven and a five. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's a really useful number to put in math problems because it has every prime factor up to seven. And it's not a huge intimidating number. All right, so I have over there two times three times five times seven, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 15 on two times two times seven, which will cancel that when I multiply this by 15 over 2 times 2 times 7, I can see my cancellations much easier. And it's faster. You can do this in your head. You can do this level of problem in your head if you develop this ability, I promise. I promise. I can do this one in my head. My colleagues can do it. And my colleagues aren't as good at math as you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, my colleagues are really good at math other math teachers. All right, so uh, here we've got 3 times 5 times 15. Well, I happen to know 3 times 5 is 15, so this is just 15 squared on 2, which happens to be 225 on 2. Okay, and if you gave this as 1, 1, 2.5, I would say, sure, that's fine, but I prefer that as an answer. It's a little nicer, just keep it as a fraction. It's easier to work with. All right, let's keep going. Okay, Okay, last one, geez. Oh, geez, geez is, is right. This one is like about as tricky as we want to get and still be like efficient. You know, we can still solve this efficiently. Watch this. Here's a trick. Multiply both sides by five. Okay, so I'm going to multiply that size by five as well so that I get this cancellation and this cancellation. And now I don't need to rewrite the problem at this point, but I can. Okay, so this is 3 on 2 multiplied by 2 on 3. That's going to be a nice cancel. G plus 6, all right, is equal to 7 because all those 5s canceled away. It's just 7 now. Multiplied by 3 on 14. It's almost like I wanted you to have nice cancels here. Minus 2G. Okay, so this now multiplies in. 3 on 2 times 2 on 3 is 1. 3 on 2 times 6 is 9. So this is g plus 9 on this side. Wow, that got simple. This multiply in gives us cancel. So that's 3 on 2. We still keep a little fraction there. But we're going to be fine. Don't worry, we'll manage. And then minus, um, dum -bum -dum -bum -bum -bum. minus 14g. Sorry, I went somewhere there. I thought about something that wasn't math. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. And now we get all our g's to one side. And this is a really easy problem now, right? This is, I mean, it's got one fraction in it. I think you'll manage. So here we add 14g to both sides. We subtract 9 from both sides. And then we get 15g is equal to negative 9 plus 3 halves. So if I take away 9 in a fancy way, you'll see that that's... Uh, negative 18 on 2. So that leaves us negative 15 on 2. Divide both sides by 15. Is the same thing as multiply by 1 on 15. Cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel. G is equal to negative 1 half. Oh, so many people at the league told me G was 1 half and it broke my heart because it really was not. It really is G is neg negative 1 half. You'll find negative one half is not the same thing as one half. It's not even, well, okay, it's close. It's one away, okay? 
But like students will do things like, oh, is the answer a thousand? And you're like, no, it's negative a thousand. And they're like, oh, I was close. And you're like, no, you weren't. You were 2,000 away. That's not close. <laughs> Missing the negative is a big mistake is what I'm saying. So avoid it by being very careful in your algebra. <laughs> not to say I never make a sign error. Okay, now we're finding the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor, which the rest of the world calls the greatest common factor, folks. Okay, and one of the best ways to do these is to factor tree them. So this is 2 times 55, which is 5 times 11. Those are the prime factors of 110. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. This is 2 times 66, which is um, 2 times 33, which is 3 times 11. Okay, and then it can be helpful, particularly in the three number problems, to make a Venn diagram. And, uh, and explore it that way. So what we would do is we would have like 111, and then I would say, well, the five is not in the overlap, okay? But the overlap includes these factors, two and 11. So they both have two times 11. I might even write down 22 there. So I've considered this and this already, and I have like leftover factor six there for 132. So the GCF, or HCF if you're a British maniac, is uh, 22, okay? It's just the overlap is the GCF. The LCM is the whole thing multiplying. And uh, one strategy would be to say, well, I know that all this is 110, and I just need to multiply it by six. So the LCM is equal to 660, oh, okay? Because all that, we already know that is 110. That's how I would solve that one. So that was correct for all the points. All right, 75 and 3330. Oh, I tried to give you some cute numbers there. Okay, so 75, I know that's divisible by three. Oh, I bet that one's divisible by three as well. Okay, and then we got 25, which gives me five and five. Not so bad so far. This one, I maybe factor it like this, 10 and 333, three, three, which factors three, and 111, one, one, which factors three, and 37, okay? And now we figure out our overlap. So our, oh, the 10, the five and two, don't forget that. So the uh, GCF, or sorry, I'll do it your way. HCF is, here's the overlap, three and five are our overlap, okay? Three and five, so that's uh, 15. And the lowest common multiple will be, well, it's all of the rest, okay? Or only count the overlap once. So it's going to be five multiplied by this number, okay? See, because this is the only one we didn't count in the overlap. So if I make my Venn diagram, this is 75. Here, it's got a five over there, not in the overlap. And then the rest of it was in the overlap three times five. And then over here we had 3330, oh, and I'm not even gonna bother listing this because I just know that that is all this and I only need to multiply by that. So that's not that hard. 3330 oh, times five is uh, 150 oh, plus uh, 1500 oh, oh, plus 1500. Oh, oh, oh. So that gives you 16650. Oh. 16650. Oh. Those are, I think, pleasurable uh, calculations to do mentally. They're kind of fun when they have those kind of nested numbers in them. All right, let's go. 510. So I notice that this is uh, 51 times 10, which is two times five. This is three times 17, and this one is harder to factor, it's two times 323, 323, you have to start checking primes. So let's see, is it divisible by three? No. Is it divisible by five? No. Is it divisible by seven? No, okay, because it would be 280 plus 43, and 43 is not divisible by seven, so no. It's also not divisible by 11. We check 13, and it's not, and then we find 17. It's like, I think it's 17 times 19. I think this was the nastiest thing I baked in there for you to go find. No one found it. 
So these are the types of questions that aren't getting answered in 10 minutes. And you see there's not a lot of factors here. However, still it's a, it is challenging to find that 17 times 19. Um, I happen to know 19 squared is 361. So if I do uh, 19 squared minus 34, I do in D, I don't know, I not. Uh, what? Why doesn't that work? Is it not 17 times 19? Am I making an error here? So at this point, I'm going to get my calculator out because I'm a little confused. Uh, oh, because I, I need to take away two 19s. That's my error. Okay, I'm being too fancy. Okay, I was doing 19 times 19 minus 2 times 19 to do 19 times 17. So I actually need to subtract 38 here, and that is indeed 323. Okay, so 323 is indeed 17 times 19. Okay, sorry about that. All right, hey, move. Me. Whoa, I got big. I don't need to be big. Let's go. All right. Like, hurry up. Yeah, I don't blame you. Okay, so let's see our overlap. Our overlap is 17 times 2. So our, our GCF is 34. And I did that on purpose because it's one of my favorite numbers. And then our LCM is going to be the absence, the overlap absence. So we could do 3 times 5 times 646. That would be one way to do it. Or you could do 19, because here's your overlap. So that's like the only thing outside the overlap is the 19, multiplied by 510. 19 times 510 might be easier. So let's do 19 times 510. I would do that as 20 minus 1 multiplied by 510. So that is equal to this multiplication, which is 1020. Sorry, with an extra zero, because it's 20, not 2, minus 510. And then that gives you 9, 6, 9, oh, yes, 9, 6, 9, oh. LCM is 9, 6, 9, oh. Okay, so that's how I would approach that one. It's pretty tricky. I, I admit that that 17 times 19 was was dirty. I, I did you a little dirty there. All right. So here, six, two times three, eight, two to the three, three twos. Okay, and 20, two times two times five. This should all be very automatic for people. And then we see that the uh, gr the HCF, not the GCF, because you like that that way, is only two. This is the only common overlap. Okay, and then we want to find the LCM. This one you might just verify is 120. You might just verify that, 120. Just look at it and be like, what's the smallest number I can multiply 20 by? The 8's divisible by and 6 is divisible by. You'll find it's 120. Okay, like you can kind of find some of these <laughs> without this special method, but here's a special method. You do your triple Venn diagram. So 6, 8, and 20. You got to be careful because here's your common overlap. All right. And then six has overlap there and 20 has overlap there. Okay. So you want that kind of trefoil looking uh, Venn diagram. And then we put the common overlaps here. So we've already taken away. I'm going to write out all the, the twos for eight. So we've got two, two, and two. We've already considered one of them in the center overlap. But then let's consider this one. It's shared by 8 and 20, so we put it there. Okay? 8 has one 2 left over that none of the others have. 8's the only one with two with three 2's. 20 has two 2's, 6 has one 2. Okay, 6 has a 3. It's the only one that has a 3, so that's not a common overlap. And 20 has the 5 there. Okay? The LCM is the multiple, the result of all of this multiplied. So 8 times 15. 8 times 15, which is 120, okay? That's how I would do it with uh, the Venn diagram style approach. Okay, now we've got a, a more challenging one. So let's take a look. Oh, 84 happens to be 2 times 42, which is 2 times 21, which is 3 times 7, okay? Bam! So good. 
105. Okay, well, maybe you take out your 3 first or your 5 first, doesn't matter. 3 times 35, which is 5 times 7. Okay, I like circling them just so I can see them more clearly. And 462. Oh, that looks harder. Oh, wait, I can notice that it's 420 plus 42. Maybe I notice the divisibility by 11. 42, okay. We got 11 there, 42. 42 is going to be a big overlap between 84 and 462, and that can accelerate our calculations. Okay, so that's 2 times 21 times 3 times 7. Okay, all right. So now we build our Venn diagram. Here's going to be our 84 right here is our 462 and here the nice big overlaps to work in is our 105. Oh, this 5 is not shared by anything so I put it out there. The 3 and the 7 is common to all of them so I'm going to put them in there 3 times 7. I can write that as 21 if I want or 3 times 7. So I've done all of these. These are gone. These are gone. They're already accounted for. But then we've got 2 and 2. So that's shared over here. Okay, so that's accounted for. 462 has an 11 that nothing else has. 84 has a 2 that nothing else has. And 105, we've already accounted for that 5 that nothing else has. Okay, so now how are we going to do this multiplication? Well, uh, look for shortcuts, I guess, would be my best advice. Um, so here we've got 4. 20, 220, okay, if I do all those multiplying, 220 times 21. So I, I, that doesn't look like such a bad multiplication to do. So we have LCM is equal to 220 times 21, I'm gonna get back to that. And the GCF, just before I forget, is equal to 21. Okay, so let's go. So, okay, all right, so. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, uh, 21 times 220, I mean, we could have, uh, we could do this as 21 times 200 plus 21 times 20. That would be fine. That's easy enough. And it's a nice nested one too. So it's 4, 2, oh, oh, plus 4, 2, oh. And so that's equal to... Uh, four six two oh it's not that bad eh four six two oh okay last problem for this video y'all really crushed the binary conversion so I don't know that I want to show oh I want to embarrass myself answering those so I'm gonna do this question that's gonna be enough for this week um, all right so 390 let's go so 390 I noticed that's 39 and 10 which is 2 and 5 and 3 and 13. Okay, 1950. Hmm, happens to be divisible by 5. And when I divide that in, lo and behold, I get 390. Okay, so I'm actually going to try leaving it there, see, see if that helps, see if I can just do go a little faster. Okay, and then 4875. Well, isn't that just disgusting looking? So let's test it for divisibility. Uh, let's divide it by 5 first. Well, we can even divide it by 25. It's clearly divisible by 25, so let's divide it by 25. So 25 uh, is going to go in there. I don't know. There I might have to long divide. I could do the long division in my head, but I don't want to showboat. So this is 1. Uh, it gives me remainder 23, so 237 is what we're going into next, like this number here, 237. I just put the remainder under their bus stop method. And so that's going to be 227, which is 9. So that's 1, 9. Oh, it's looking a little familiar. Um, so that's 227 and leaves me with remainder 12. So I put that down here, 1, 2, 5. Oh, look at that. 25 goes in there five times. 195. Well, isn't that neat? 195. 195. You know, it's just hanging out right there. 195. So it happens to be here. 2 and 195. 
So now maybe I see there's an easier way to factor this number up here, is take out the two first, and then I get 195. And now I, it's like just all included in all of the overlap B stuff, right? So now let's see, 390, uh, 1950, and 4875, make your trefoil. I mean, you can do this in your head, do this in your head, but um, I'm doing it on paper because you can't see it when I do it in my head. All right, so now our common overlap is 195. There ain't nothing bigger because this doesn't have a factor 2 and this one only has an extra factor 2. So I'm going to just put 195 there and I don't even need to bother to factor that. All right, and then let's keep going. So... Uh, we have up there 390, so there's an overlap of 2, but it's shared with 1950. 1950 also has a 5, and that's shared with 4875, and then we have that. Okay, so this one, you know, comes down 5 and 5, so one of them is shared, and one of them is not. And so then this is what our trefoil ends up looking like. So because these three numbers share so many factors, their, their HCF is so large, such a large component of them, their, their GCM is not going to be, sorry, their LCM is not going to be that big. Uh, so 195 is the HCF, and the LCM is going to be 5 times 2, that's easy, that's that number. So 10 times 195 times 5. So 1950 multiplied by 5. And then we're going to have a 5 and carry a 2, and then a 7 and carry a 4, and then a 9, 7, 50. There. So that would be the HCF and the LCM. Or that number. All right. I hope you enjoyed these challenges as much as I enjoyed explaining them just now and uh, exploring them again. Perhaps I made an error in this video. I, this is like unverified. I do have an answer key somewhere. I'm not looking at it and t checking it. So if you found an error that I've made, feel free to point it out. And uh, hey, I'll give you leaderboard points. I'll give you leaderboard points if you find an error of mine. All right, that's it for me from now. Thanks so much for showing up for your learning, mathletes. Um, remember to be awesome. You're just keeping, keeping on just doing great work and when you do great work like this on a regular basis you're just going to love the skills that come from it bye for now